Alright, here we go. My check, my check. Hey, turn up. My check, my check. What's good? Let's get some audio tests in this piece. What's going on, everybody? Let's see here. Type it in, type it in, type it in. What up, what up, what up? Let me pop this chat out here real quick. Let's see who's in this piece, dog. All right, let's see here. All right, all right, all right. Bam, what's up, what's up? Just waiting for a few more people to get in here. <laughs> Are you live live? I mean, yeah, we live live, son. Uh, let me see here, hold on one second. Just doing a couple of few more parameter things real quick in my OBS. Uh, let's see here. See, cancel that. What's good? What's good? All right. Okay, there. Bam, there we go. All right. I'm late now, nah, man. We had a we had a few little minor um technical difficulties here, bro. So, you know. But Trying to make sure the live is right, you know what I'm saying? Trying to make sure the lighting is right. Trying to make sure the mic is right. Um, you know, I'm using this whole new microphone setup type thing, man. So um, I just want to make sure like the sound quality and everything is on point right now. So if y'all can, um, if y'all can make sure that the sound quality and everything is on point, yo, I appreciate it. How's the sound? How's the video? Uh, he's definitely buying an A7R4. Yo, you already know, man. Come on now. That what, what would I? Come on now. Uh, sound is good. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's see here. That's what's up. So, sound is good. Video is good. Yeah, you also know that you can um, you can um up your video quality. Also, you can change it from like. Um, you know, whatever it is, like 360, you should be able to change it to um, like 720 or 1080, stuff like that also. So uh, let's see here. That's good right there. Good. That's what's up. All right. So honestly, man, I wanted to come online tonight. Like I said, we're going to be doing this every Wednesday. Um, I don't have my coffee or nothing with me right now, but... Uh, we we gonna get we we gonna get really deep, you know what I'm saying? This is an opportunity for you guys to hook up with me. Let me move this computer over here to the front. There we go. That much that's much better. Um, but this is an opportunity for you guys to talk to me, man. To ask me any kind of questions. I'm gonna read some stuff from my Instagram, from my social media, and um, yo, know, I'm gonna ask all the questions photography wise that you guys wanna know. Um, anything about off-camera flash, anything. We're going to have topics. We're going to do this every Wednesday, same time, 930. And, um, yeah, we're going to have some fun with this, man. This is going to be probably about 30 minutes or so. And, um, yo, we're going to chop it up. You know what I'm saying? I, I think this is, I think this is a platform that a lot of people are not using enough, um, especially to support and to give back to the people who have, you know, kind of brought you to that point to where you are, whether you got a hundred thousand followers, two hundred thousand followers, whatever the case may be. I just don't think and I don't even have a hundred thousand followers yet. So but I hey, I like helping out. I like giving back, honestly. That's the reason why I'm doing this. Um I like to help out people who are still who are up and coming because you know, I remember where I was when uh, when I first started off in photography. I used to send people a thousand messages. I used to, yo, can you, hey, can you look over my work? Can you tell me how this looks? Can you tell me how the lighting looks? Can you, can you help me out with some editing tips? Can you do this? Can you do that? And I would never get no damn responses. And it irked the shit out of me. I'm telling you, ain't that, ain't that like the most 
horrible thing when you got these photographers that you support and uh you know you send them messages send them messages these things don't never respond like no can you like answer me a question like and i know when you got you know two three hundred thousand followers you know you can't get with everybody i understand that um but what i do is i i get a lot of messages but i do take time every day about 30 minutes and i got through all my messages and answer as many of them as i can so um anytime y'all send me a message if i don't give it back to you right then and there trust me i'm going to get to you uh, because I really think it's important. So, yeah, let's see here. What we got? Uh, very clear. The phone's perfect. I'm reading some comments real quick. Sound and videos on point. That's what I'm talking about. I want this stuff to be on 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 point. Question: Hooking you up with your mom? <laughs> Yo, come to Virginia, man. That's what I'm saying. Come to the beach. Come to Virginia Beach. That's something I can tell you. Uh, let's see. Hey, Brand. I'm thinking of buying the 8200 Flash. Ooh, I got to fly in here. I'm thinking about buying an 8200 Flash. You recommend it live during research on it. Seems pretty good. What do you think? Um, the 8200, man. If you are getting, or if you're just getting into flash photography, the 8200 is the most versatile monolight on the market, on the planet, hands down. It's 200 watts. It's perfect for getting, especially for getting started in off camera flash. Um, I will always say definitely get an 8200. I don't waste my time with speed lights and stuff like that. The only time I will really recommend a speed light is if you do weddings or something and you're doing some type of uh, some type of wedding reception or something is dark and you need something on camera to, you know, I would get, you know, then yes, get a speed light, maybe get like a Gary Fong or something so you can spread the light really nice. And yeah, but other than that, if you're not doing events and weddings, I would definitely say get an 8200. Once you start to learn off-camera flash, once you start to learn how flash behaves, um, once you start to understand, you know, where you want your light set up, how the light falls off, what is the inverse square law, how does it apply to photography, how does it apply to off-camera flash, once you start to learn it and you start to get it and you start to do research on flash and everything, then after that, I will recommend you get another 8200 and buy the ADB2 adapter and then you upgrade to 400 watts of power. Um, learn what it's like to use a larger, um, larger, uh, larger flash. And then those times when you don't need that much power, you can always split them in half and use one as your main light and then one is like your rim light. And then you start to learn how to use two flashes, um, you know, or second light. So the 8200, like I said, it is the most versatile right now. I, I, I can't recommend it enough. Um, and then when you start to get into other lighting techniques, like throwing light at your models from across the room and doing harsh light setups and doing a lot of editorials and stuff, then I would recommend you step up to like a 600 or something where you're going to need that, that power, especially if you're trying to shoot through daylight or shoot through harsh sunlight and you're really trying to overpower the sun um, because, you know, you can't really overpower the sun with one 8200. You can do it with two, uh, but not one. So... Uh, it's it's really hard, you know. It's really hard. So, definitely think about that when you're getting a flash. Uh, we'll see. We got Fuji XT3 or Canon or Sony uh, equivalent to the XT3 man. Well, equivalent to that would be something like the 6400. As far as Canon, the 90D. Um, yeah, that 90D is a beast. Now, as you the guys knew, I shot Canon for years, for like three to four years. I had the, I had the 6D, I had the 6D, uh, I had the 7, uh, 70D, I had the 80D, which was one of my favorite cameras. Um, I used the 77. I used um, a lot of Sony cameras. I used the 5D Mark III, and my last one that I had, as you can see with my earlier videos, was the 5D Mark IV. I used it for a very long time. Um, and let me see here. Hold on. Uh, mic check. Is my mic still on? Because it looks like my thing is going out. Mic check, mic check. Hold on a second. Bang, 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 bang. Mic check, mic check. All right, hold on one second. Uh, yeah, yeah, one second, one second. 
changing this real quick. All right, here we go. Check, check. All right, I think we're good now. Check, 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 check. All right, sorry about that. Had to fix some stuff. Get my pop up chat. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. All right. Um, hey, can you guys give me a thumbs? It's good. We good. We good. Thumbs up. We good. What's up? What's up? We good. <laughs> all right. All right. Cool. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, but anyway. So anyway, yeah, the eighty two hundred man. That's um. That's definitely what I wanted to tell you guys. That's why. That's definitely what I would recommend about the 8200. So, um, definitely a good question. All right, we good. All right, cool, cool, cool. We good. All right, what's? Uh, let me see. Let me go back up here and see what I missed. Um, I was wondering, do you have a video about using ND filters to get an HSS like result? So, um, high speed sync. So the only time I use ND filters is when it is really really harsh outside and even when you when even when I'm at one eight thousandth of a second and I still can't underexpose my model then I will put on the ND filter like a like a three stop or six top ND filter to get me underexposed so I can use flash on top of um on when I uh, when I'm going so fast on the shovel when I'm at one eight thousandth of a second if you go if I if I do my shutter, if I'm exposing for my ambient and I and I am fast on the shutter at one eight thousandth of a second and my thing says that I'm still overexposed, that means my lens is letting in a lot of light and it's still overexposed because it's letting in so much light. So I still want to now I have two options. Either I can stop down my aperture. Say for example I'm shooting an eighty five I'm shooting with an eighty five millimeter and it's a one point four. If I go as fast as I can on my shutter to one eight thousandth of a second but I'm still overexposed I can't put flash on top of being overexposed she's gonna be bright as hell and it's not gonna work right so I have two options either I can stop down my aperture to about 2.8 3.5 f4 or something like that but see I don't want to do that because I want that I want that shallow depth of field I want that background so my other only other option is to do what to get an ND filter so a ND filter can add about you know six stops of light get me underexposed to where I want to be at and then I can use flash on top of and then I can use flash because then that ND filter get me underexposed so that's the only time I really use a ND filter is when I just really can't seem to underexpose my model like I want to because there's so much light and my lens is letting in so much light. So that's the only time I really use an ND filter. So yeah, definitely good question. Uh, let's see what else you got. Uh, let's see anyone. Da, 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 da. Micro Four Thirds is a crap. Yep. Damn, six oh eight is terrible. <laughs> Buffering. Let's see here. Yeah, I got insurance. Don't waste. No, don't. I would not waste my time on Micro Four Thirds. I mean, I just, I just wouldn't. I mean, some people like the whole, you know, that Fuji system like that, but that's just way too close. And the lenses, I, I just don't waste time with Micro Four Thirds. Yeah, I want to jump off camera flash. I do a lot of natural light. I want to improve my lighting. Absolutely. If you really want to step your game up, if you really want to step your photography up, man. Off camera flash is just the way to go. And I'm going to talk about off camera flash versus natural light in just a second. Just so I can give you my thoughts about natural light versus off camera flash. We're going to have a topic about that. So you guys get your questions and get your get the get the topic ready because it's about to it's about to go crazy. It's about to be nuts. 
Uh, what background and holder do you use for your studio? Um, if you send me a message in like my IG or Facebook, I can give you the links to the ones that I use. I use a lot of different backgrounds. I like use a lot of different colors. It really just depends on the shoot that I'm doing and the model, how, we're, how she's dressed, and what I think will go good with the scene. Uh, so it really just depends. Uh, let's see what else. What are your tips for avoiding shadows? while shooting in the studio well you don't have really have a lot of shadows in in the studio i mean the shadows honestly come from the poses the way your models pose because everything is kind of like lit into a studio you're not battling the ambient in the studio you know everything is you're in a controlled environment so I really don't have to do a lot of shadows. Now, if you're talking about more shadows like under the chin and things like that, then if you looked at my last video that I just posted about tips inside a studio, sometimes I use a reflector on the other side. Like, um, I will have a light in the back. When the light flashes for the rim light, it can hit the reflector and then it can illuminate the, the model and get those shadows under her chin. Um, other than that, you, you can use another light. And you have a rim, uh, you have your main light, and then you have your fill light. Um, so that's another way that you can illuminate shadows. You just use a fill light instead of just using one main light. So you can use a reflector, you can use a, a fill light. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do to help illuminate those shadows, but it just depends on your setup and um, how big your studio is, what you can fit in there, what you can't. Um, but yeah, a, a, a fill light or a, um, or a reflector is the best way to illuminate those shadows. Uh, what are your tips? Let me see. No question. Just want to take a minute to tell you how much I appreciate you. I appreciate it, Miss. I appreciate it. Business that, yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. This young YouTuber is pushing Marco Four Thirds, talking about he is endorsed by a cam manufacturer. I used to respect that YouTuber until he told me that lie. Uh, yeah, man. You, you know what? A lot of things, man. You honestly just got to go out here and try for yourself, man. Like. Micro Four Thirds is just not something that I would recommend. I mean, to each his own. If you're a Fuji suitor and you like the Micro Four Thirds look, by all means, make your paper boo-boo. But it's just not for me, man. Uh, all right, let me see. So I got all those. All right, mic is good. Still solid. Da, 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 da. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, let me see. I should start a YouTube channel, and my first video will be make sure you have insurance on your gear just in case it's all stolen. You have to, if there is no way I'm going to have all this gear and not have insurance on it. I mean, we got thousands and thousands of gear. I want to make sure my mic, my mic look like it's peaking right now. But anyway, um, I got a lot of gear. So, hold on, let me check this. My check, my check, my check, my check, my check. Okay, I think I'm good. Uh, let me turn it down a little bit. <laughs> All right, anyway. Um, so, yeah, man, I got a lot of gear. And not having that invested, I mean, you can call your car insurance agency and stuff like that and, you know, get some type of insurance on your gear. I mean, honestly, because that's just, I would, man, I would be so mad if somebody stole all my gear, man. Oh, my God. I think I would, I think I would probably leave photography. <laughs> Oh, God, I've got insurance. Ooh, I'm insured, buddy. Uh, let me see here. You're good. Hey, B, can you do a on your editing process or you don't have that already? Having a hard time isolating a model to make adjustments on skin tone without affecting the background. Um, I don't do a lot of editing videos. I am going to try to start doing some live editing videos and things like that. Here's the thing with editing, though. This is just my opinion on editing. There are there are so many vid. You got Flern and everybody who's telling you about so a thousand different. Like take for instance fre uh, frequency separation. There is probably a hundred thousand videos on YouTube about frequency separation. So I've never thought that it was a. I never thought it to be um, to be important for me to do a. A video on frequency separation I the way I do frequency separation the way I edit skin is going to be totally different than the other thousand videos that you see and then there's always going to be those people in the in the in the chat room who's gonna be like 
oh, you shouldn't do it like that. You should probably try using it like this. You should probably try doing it like that. Listen, I ain't, ain't nobody got time for that. I mean, honestly, everybody has their own way of editing. And honestly, here's the thing about editing, man. You can have three or five different photographers give them the same camera and the same lens. They're all going, they can all take the same picture. But you know there's one thing that they're going to do differently? It's edit. Everybody, editing is like the only thing you have that separates you from another photographer. That's kind of something that you keep like near and dear to your heart. You know what I'm saying? Like basic stuff, yeah, we can do show you basic. I can show basic stuff on like frequency separation and dodge and burn and like a lot of different things. But like I said, a lot of those things, there's so many people who do it. I mean, my little my little process ain't going and I mean, there's people out there who can do dodge and burn free separation a whole lot better than me. But I know what I'm doing. You know, but the way I do my process is going to be totally different than somebody else. And then there's going to be somebody be like, oh, you should do it like this. Man, listen, get on out of here with all that, bro. But, yeah, anyway, uh, Elman is good. Yeah, Elman. What happened to Photo Mikey? He's around somewhere. He's always in, in and out. Uh, let's see here. What else you got? What else you got? I noticed you have some V-flats in the background. How are you liking them, and what is your feedback? Listen, man, I love the V-flats. I'm telling you, I think everybody should have a V-flat. Everybody should have a V-flat. If you ain't got a V-flat, you need to get one. I don't care if you make your own. But the V-flats that I have from V-flat were are absolutely amazing. Go look at my last video that I just posted like a few days ago. I used the V-flats in my studio in here and got some credible stuff. I used the white side, I used the black side. And when you use V-flash, there's a, using V-flash is another, another photography technique because you learn how to use the white side as like a feel. You can use it as a feel and then you learn the negative side as basically absorbing light or taking light away. There's so many interesting things in photography, man, that people just kind of like succumb themselves to like the things that they know right now. But their photography is so much more than, you know, just shooting every day the same exact way. Um, and that's one of the things I stress on my Instagram. People always ask me why I have so I I'm not like a lot of Instagram photographers who do the same thing day in and day out over and over and over. When you go to my Instagram page, you're going to see male models, you're going to see studio shoots, you're going to see off-camera flash, you're going to see on location, you're going to see date, you're going to see sunrise, you're going to see nighttime shoots, you're going to see everything because I, I believe with all of my heart, the only way to make it in this industry is to make yourself the most versatile photographer that you can. That's the best that's the best thing to do. I don't want to be one of those photographers where a company or somebody that's big up there, they come to you and be to be like, "Hey, you know, we want you to do this shoot, but we need it in the studio. Do you got a studio? Do you know how to shoot in the studio?" I'm not going to be like half of these photographers out here and be like, "No, I just shoot off camera flash." Because shooting in the studio is different than shooting outside. Lighting is different. You're talking about a controlled environment versus an uncontrolled environment. They, they, there's two different ways to shoot. There's two different ways to do your ambient. There's two different ways to do a lot of different things. I don't believe in just being a one-trick photographer. I don't. There is too many one-trick photographers out here. I'm talking about learning how to do natural light. Learning how to do off-camera flash, learning how to shoot with LEDs, learning how to shoot with, you know, just V-flash, learning how to shoot with, you know, all, learning how to shoot in the studio versus learning how to shoot outside, learning how to shoot in the daytime versus cloudy versus shooting when it's nighttime outside. How many people know how to shoot outside with off-camera flash when it's 10, 11 o'clock at night? How about shooting at mid midnight? What if somebody wanted some really good shots at midnight? You're going to be like, oh, I can't make that money. You can have it because I don't know how to do it. No. It's about being the most versatile person that you can. I highly recommend everybody out there, learn something new. And when you get it, master it and learn something else new. We're never going to be masters in photography because there's just so many things to do. But understand it and do it to the best of your ability. Do it to the point to where somebody can call you and be like, look, psh, 
I can do all. I can, I can do studio. I can shoot natural light. I can shoot off camera flash. You want to shoot at three o'clock in the morning? That ain't nothing. You want to shoot at midnight? What? You know, because the other person who they're going to ask, they're not going to be able to do it. Somebody got to make that money. That's the way I look at it. It's too much money out here to just be a one-trick wonder. That's the way I look at it. Uh, let's see what else I got. Uh, that was that was my rant. Sorry, that was my rant on that. Uh, let me see. Bring a model up. When you're shooting, how do you usually place your model according to the sun? If I have sun outside, I always place my models back to the sun. Never want to place your model unless you want that harsh light look. I'm never going to tell you you should never place your model in the sun because all, all different things with sun is different. All those things are different. So I normally, <laughs> I normally have my models back to the sun if I have nice sun outside. I'm using the sun as my rim light because the sun, is a, sun can create a beautiful rim light. And I turn her towards me, which is nine times out of ten where the shadow side of her is going to be at. So then I can use off-camera flash and illuminate that and still get a nice rim light from the sun. There might be times where you shoot natural light and you need the sun. You need to find that light, um, that nice diffuse light to do that. So it just depends on the lighting, really, honestly. Uh, let me see here. Da, 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 da. I got a variable ND filter, but don't have an HSS mono light yet because I'm just starting out. Absolutely. That's good. Variable ND filter is, is fine. I mean, it's an ND filter, so you're still going to be able to underexpose with it. So it's okay. Um, top three favorite lenses. Woo! Actually, I got two of them in here. You want to see them? Top three favorite lenses. All right, top three favorite lenses. Well, first of all, everybody knows this is my favorite go-to lens. Here, I'll let you see it so you guys know what it is. That's right, my favorite lens by far, the 105 millimeter 1.4, best portrait lens on the planet. Um, 1.4 aperture, they call it the Boca Master because you know, I rock with Boca Nation. And um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely insane. Um, my second favorite lens is this one right here, which is the 70 to 200 G Master. Um, the, the pretty most versatile lens um, going from 70 to 200 and it's sharp throughout the whole entire focal length. Um, absolute beast. Um, my third favorite lens would have to be a toss up between my 3514 Zeiss and the 5014 Sigma. I've been using the 514 Sigma for a lot. The last shoot I just did, the last shoot I just posted on YouTube, that whole entire studio shoot was done with the 50 millimeter 14 Sigma. Absolute incredible, insane lens, man. But I like the focal length of the 35 Zeiss. So it's between those two. So I don't know. Well, I I come back to you though. Good question. Uh, let's see here. I have a Flashpoint Sport 600, absolutely. I got a cheapo Vision 4. Dude, get rid of that Vision 4 and invest. Bro, I learned a lot from you. That's what's up. I'm still talking about that photo walk. Hey, as you guys know, we've already announced the second photo walk for everybody who's here. If you guys missed the last photo walk, man, you missed the treat. We had an awesome time. Um, hopefully I'm going to get that footage. I'm getting that footage still from the photo walk, photo walk we just did on the beach. The second photo walk, it was so in high demand, I had to do another one. So the second photo walk we're going to do is going to be October 19th. And yes, it's going to be around Halloween. I can't give any other details yet. I've already secured the models and the location. So we're going to have a Food, we are, we're going to have food this time, too. So food is going to be included in the budget. Um, and, uh, man, we are, all, we are all, my team is already on it. I'm telling you. If you guys missed the last photo walk we just did, you guys missed an awesome time. We had about 16 photographers out there. We had eight models. We, was, we had off-camera flash shut up inside. Anybody in here who was at the, at the photo walk will tell you. We had off-camera flash set up in the ocean. So people could get shots. I mean, we had two Explore 600s with two 38-inch glow uh, softboxes 
they were on sea stands. They were set up in the ocean, and man, we had it. This is how we, this is how a photo walk should be. We had an amazing, amazing time. We actually had stations. I actually had stations set up. I had about seven or eight different stations, and the models would rotate to each of these stations. And when they rotated, the photographers rotated the opposite way. So the photographers got to, got to shoot with different models at different stations. And it was amazing. And the photographers, it was two photographers to a team. So think about this. Think about being at a photo walk. You know, at a photo walk, a lot of times, especially a lot of these YouTubers, they have these photo walks and it, they get like, 15, 20 different photographers, and you're in this group with about 20 other people. All of you guys are jockeying for a freaking position to try to shoot the model. Then you gotta wait five, you ain't gotta wait like 20 minutes with to do off-camera flash with the model. And then when you get up there, you get like three shots, and then you go. Some of these some of these photographers on here have the worst, the worst photo walks. I've heard about a few of them. I just don't say anything. So one of the things that we did at my photo walk is that we had 16 photographers and we had eight models. So we had different stations. I had different stations set up around the beach and I put my photographers, two people to a team. So that means two photographers per model. You stay with that model for 20 minutes and then you rotate it. So it was me. So if I'm with another photographer, we're shooting this model. It's only two of y'all doing off camera flash. So one person's holding the stand. You guys are getting hundreds of shots just for one model. After your 20 minutes is up, you rotate to the next station. Um, so some of them were doing off camera flash two or three times. Um, they was in. Everybody was in the water. I even told everybody, bring your swim trunks. All of you guys are going to be in the water, and we had an amazing time. And you was never overlapping, jumping over other people. So if any of y'all trying to put on a really good photo walk, hit me up because I can really give you some tips on how to make your photo walks really, really good. So first of all, you're not having a bunch of people there. They're not jumping over each other. and They're not overlapping each other. And people are not waiting 20 or 30 minutes or sitting around not doing anything. Everybody was shooting all the time. You guys better learn something. All right, because half of these guys don't know what they're doing. I'm just saying. I, I hate it. I hate to say it, but I'm just saying. Anyway, whatever. All right, whatever. <laughs> anyway, that was my rant on that. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to see where I am in my uh, thing. Okay, let's see here. We got da, 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 da. Mike is fine. What's a good way to? Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, okay, da -da. So, so photo walk sounds good. Mike's fine. What is a good way to promote photography when you're just starting out? Um, social media. Social media is pretty much the best way to promote your photography. Um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube channel. Um, you know, start to learn it. Um, start to start to understand photography. Start to start to get those images. You know, start to create some really amazing images. Learn photography first. You know, I would definitely shoot with friends, shoot with family, shoot with, you know, models who don't mind doing, you know, TFP shoots so you can start to practice and start to learn. Can't really promote something if you don't know what you're doing. That's the thing about it. A lot of these photographers get out here, they don't know what they're doing, but they're trying to promote themselves. You got to learn. You got to know what you're doing first to make money. Um, you know, you do a shoot for somebody and charge them $100, $200 and your pictures look, I mean, you're going to have issues. Learn photography first. Learn your camera inside and out. Learn the lenses. Learn flash. Learn composition. Uh, learn everything first before you try to get out here and, you know, don't, you know, kind of mess yourself up. Uh, let me see here. Can I have free gear since you have a lot? My birthday coming up. Hey, that's funny. You know what? My birthday is coming up in two weeks also. Ah. Uh, let's see, uh, Lightroom or other F4 editing. I use Lightroom and I use, um, I was about to say Capture One. I don't, I use Photoshop. I don't use Capture One. I use Lightroom and um, Photoshop. Um, I'm waiting on the Polar Per Peter McKinnon edition. Vivid, da, 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 should be here Saturday. Uh, Peter McKinnon has some really good um, indie filters. I don't, I don't use a lot. I don't use his stuff, but um, I never used it, so I can't really comment on it. So, 
Um, let me see. You need to come to Tennessee. Well, you know I'm from the Midwest, right? I'm always in the area because I am from Indiana. If you guys don't know, yes, I am from Indianapolis, Indiana. I am a Midwest person to my heart. Half of my family is in Chicago. Half of my family is in, well, most of my family is in Indiana because that's where I'm from. So I'm always passing through Kentucky and Tennessee all the time, uh, whatever. Uh, Nashville, I used to come down there a lot after we left the Kentucky Derby. So I'm Midwest, man. If you don't know me, now you know. Colt Brandon is Midwest. Absolutely. To my heart. Uh, let's see here. What else you got? Uh, da, 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 come to see. Drop videos, bro. I'm always dropping videos. What is your opinion on the 70 to 200 F4? I love the compression look, but can't afford the G Master. Do you think this would be a solid investment or would you wait for the rumored Tamron? Um, I would not get the 70 to 200 F4. I, I don't think it's worth it. Um, I would definitely save and look for other options. Um, I don't know what Tamron has coming out. Everybody's anticipating that it might be a 70 to 200. I don't, I hope it is. Um, I already have the G master, I, but the 70 to 200 G master is the best 70 to 200 on the planet. Um, but I don't, I don't, I used to have a Tamron when I had shot cannon and I loved it. I really did. I, I, I loved when Tamron had it. So I'm hoping that they might come out with a 7200 E mount, um, but I would not invest in the 70 to 200 F4. I wouldn't. I just wouldn't. So, thing is a waste. I, I would say definitely save your money and um, either wait for it or get something. Get something in the middle. Uh, get like a 135 if you want to. If you want that longer focal length. Um, but I don't know if you need it for like the versatility. Um, I would I would just save, honestly. Uh, let's see here. We've been waiting on that Tamron for years. <laughs> F4 is great lens for the price. It is. Definitely is. But like I said, the 2.8 is heels over that 4. Uh, let's see here. Probably could get 9 to 1,000. Those V sats are cool, but I'll probably make my own. A lot of people make their own V flats. I'm just telling you like it is. I mean, they're the V flats are pretty expensive. They're like two hundred dollars just for one. So, but they are amazing. Just saying. Uh, Seven two is a great lens. If you don't want to spend money to eight, appreciate it. Yep. Would you shoot nature or wildlife? Would Would you shoot nature and wildlife to be different? Um, I will shoot nature and wildlife. Um, I don't really have a passion for nature and wildlife. I really, really don't. Even though there is a lot of great nature and wildlife photographers out there, um, I just don't have the passion for it because it's mostly all natural light. Um, and I'm not, I just don't feel like it is going to do anything for me as a photographer. Um, I just don't. Um, it's fun. It's cool to shoot, you know, wildlife. Um, but you got to be in that area. You pretty much got to be a traveling photographer in order to shoot really good wildlife pictures. You can't just go to the zoo all the time and think you're going to get away with that. No, you need to be in the safari, in those areas, down in the trenches, shooting those type of shots to be a really good nature wildlife photographer. Um, if I lived in an area like that, some type of desert, desertous area where I can shoot that type of wildlife all the time. Um, I would probably have more of a passion for it, but I don't. It's just me. I can. I mean, shooting wildlife is shooting wildlife. Um, I got a fast camera to do it and fast lenses. But, uh, yeah, I don't have the passion for it. Uh, let's see. But if somebody called me up and was like, hey, we want you to shoot this. I, I, <laughs> Wildlife shit, fly me out. I got you. I, hey, I, I do it in a heartbeat. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Sigma 105, fire, yeah, all day. Uh, let's see here. What else? Let's see. Here. So if, so if he says, so if have the Sony 85 Sigma 35, what zoom lens would be the best? 16, 13. It depends on why you need a zoom lens. Are you just trying to fill out your your range or your lenses? What's the purpose of getting the 16 to 35 or the 24 to 70? You have to tell me, you have to give me details. Um, because if you have an 85 and you have a 35 already, um, what would be the purpose of getting the zoom? 
why would you need the Zoom? Unless you're shooting weddings or unless you're shooting events where you don't want to change lenses all the time, then I can understand that. But if you're just a portrait shooter, um, depending on what you shoot, why would you need that lens? Got to give me details, bro. I am very, very meticulous. So I like details. So you got you to gotta, you gotta talk to me with details. All right, let's see here. What we got? Yeah. All right, let's see here. How about the Orlet Rove lights? This with my Sony trigger, and how's that light feeling? Negative. I don't like the Orlet. I used it one time, and I went right back to I went right back to my Explorer or Flashpoint. I just couldn't get. There's not. There's nothing wrong with the system and everything, but when you're just already invested in Flashpoint um, and Adorama, and they the the system just works so much better. I just stay with Flashpoint. So. I only used that oil at one time though, so um, I can't really comment too much on it. Uh, me and my boy Orlando are trying to bring your style of photo wall walls to Charleston. Maybe you need to swing down here. Hey, I'm not too far from Charleston, South Carolina, bro. I'm in I'm in VA, so us the Carolinas and VA is kind of close together, man. Y'all probably need to go ahead and um bring it up. Uh, let's see here. What's up, Mikey? Uh, G, my mouth just dropped. Didn't know you was in the Midwest. I'm in Chicago. I'm not in the Midwest right now. I'm in Virginia Beach, but I'm all. I always go home to Indiana. Indiana is my home, so Indianapolis is my home. That's where I'm from. I just left Indianapolis like two months ago, um, cause I always come home to visit family. Um, I'm actually going back. I think in November, possibly. So, yeah. Uh, let's see what else you got. Just kick it with lacrosse, Wisconsin, bro. Yeah, all right. Fly me out. I come to Wisconsin too. I ain't ain't no shame. Uh, let's see. My birthday is the fourteenth. Virgo's in the big. My birthday is the twentieth. If you really want to know, no shame in my game. My birthday is September twentieth. Two weeks away. Uh, let me see here. Tamron is legit. What made you switch from Canon to Sony? Oh, good question. I did a video on this on my earlier YouTube channel. I switched from Canon to Sony because. I got tired of Canon not innovating, not listening to their people. And they're kind of still doing the same thing now. Still, back even when back then, they're never li they don't listen. They really, really don't. They Canon is one of those companies that are more stuck in their ways, so they're kind of going to do their own thing. Um, but when I had the, I was shooting with the 80D, the 5D Mark IV, and I remember the day I left Canon. Um, I was waiting on the 6D Mark II to come out, and I was so excited because I wanted another full-frame camera to match with my 5D Mark IV. The 5D Mark IV is an incredible beast. The funny thing is, actually, I just posted pictures today on my Instagram page from when I used my um, 5D Mark IV. Um, so go check out those pictures on my Instagram page from, from just like 20 minutes ago. Uh, but after they, after they dropped the 6D Mark II... I said, I'm, that's it. I said, I'm going. I'm done. I did not like that camera at all. It was a bus. The 6D Mark II was a bus. One four thousandth of a second. One car slot. I mean, it was just a freaking mess. It was a mess. So after that, man, I was like, you know what? I'm out. So I was going back and forth to Best Buy and playing with all the cameras like I always do. And I remember picking up the A7R II. And I remember using the eye out of focus. I remember using how, just seeing how fast it was. And I was like, you know what? This is what I need for my type of photography. So, uh, yeah, I made that switch. I sold all. I had the Tamron's 24 to 70 and all other kind of third-party lenses with my 5D Mark IV. Man, I sold that stuff the next day. My stuff was gone. I was, and then I was fully invested. I used all my Canon lenses for about like a month uh, with the Sigma MC11 adapter. After that, psh, my stuff was gone. I was fully invested in the Sony. So, yeah, bro, I had to go, man. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Squaw, squaw. Let's see here. What else you got? All right, let's see here. Only shooters like no Nikon. <laughs> you guys mess up. Not Nikon, bro. Uh, let's see here. Zoom is great. Yeah, you can zoom with the mirrorless. Yes, you can. It's kind of a zoom, but yeah, it depends on the lens. But yeah, you still got like other zoom options. Um, getting into shooting more videos. I pre-ordered the Sony A7R4, and I'm skipping the A7R3. I currently have the A7R2. Do you think it's a great idea for wedding and portraits? Do I think what? Hold on. Who is that? N Nettie Davis. 
do I think what is a great idea for weddings and portraits? We go, I'm going to answer this question because I know there's a lot of people in who just asked me that question. So kind of explain what's the detail. You said that you pre-ordered the A7R4. You're skipping the A7R3. You currently have the A7R2. Do you think that this is great, a great idea? Weddings and portraits. What is a great idea? So let me know what you're talking about. A7R4 is way too many pins for me. I'd rather da, 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 da. I like to link up with you when, when I'm in Indianapolis. No doubt, man. I always post on my Instagram and my um, um on my Facebook when I'm going back home. So definitely hit me up. What's up, Big Lion? What do you think the whole canon has better color signs hype? That's not a hype, man. That's It's been like that for ages, honestly. Canon just has a better color science than Sony. That's just how it is. Their stuff is not really, it's not about it being more saturated. Um, their, their colors are just brilliant. The, their science is just better. Um, now, yeah, you, I can make my Sony camera um, kind of match a Canon color science by adjusting like the saturation and things and like in your picture files and stuff like that. Um, to, you know, to make your stuff a little bit more poppy, but I post process my pictures anyway. But yeah, like straight out of camera, like Sony's colors has just always been better. I mean, I mean, uh, Canon's colors have just always been better, man. I still love them to this day. Hell, I was thinking about just picking up the EOS R just to have it because I love Canon's colors that much. Um, even though I'm fully, I'm a full Sony shooter. Um, but I love, I love it, man. I don't know what it is, man, or where we can get over that hump, but as far as colors, like straight out of camera, man, Canon's going to win that battle every time. That's, there's no doubt about it. Uh, let me see here. What else you got? Nice somebody. So, uh, let's see. Ah. What's up, Alonzo? What advice would you give to somebody wanting to start a YouTube channel, not for teaching, but showcasing their journey through photography? Um... It's a good idea. It gives you another platform in order to get your stuff out there and to get your work out there. So, you know, if you want to start something just to see, you know, see where you start off at, it's a great it's a great thing to to um to show where you used to be at or show where you started from. You know, to um pinpoint that time, that moment in time where you started photography and to where like where you started off at and then where you, how far you came. So that's a really good idea. Um, but yeah, man, that's, that's great. And then a lot of other people starting off or amateurs or beginners just like you, you know, they're going to ask you questions like, how did you do it? You know, what was the, some of the first things that you bought or some of the first things that you did? You never know whose lives you might touch. Um, but, you know, there's millions and hundreds of millions of people on YouTube. Everybody's always looking for something. And there's a lot of beginning photographers who are, you know, looking for beginning things. Um, that's why I did that video with the A6000 not too long ago because a lot of people starting off says, like, look, I ain't got the money for all that stuff that y'all got. Can you just show me what I can, what is the A6000 capable of doing? Is it still something that can hang with the big boys in 2019? I said, psh. You kidding me? The A6000 can still hang with the best of them. Of course, you still gotta, you still need to have some good glass. But as camera-wise, yeah, it can still hang with the best of them. It still pretty much has the same sensor. You're still gonna get the kind of the same image quality. Um, it's all about the glass that you put on it. Honestly, you put good glass on the front of the A6000, you're gonna get crazy. I put this 10514 on my on the front of my A6000. I can, it's going to be better than a lot of stuff that you see. That's just how it is. Um, but it's all about, honestly, it's about the glass, man. When you get to that point, it's just, it's about investing in the glass mainly more than a body. So, uh, let me see here. What's up? Sony is the best. <laughs> Sony is the best. Uh, let's see. I remember when you made that video. Yeah, let's see. Yes, do a video with the EOS R and the 8512. I did a video with the EOS R and the 8518. You can go see that video, but I haven't. I'm not using doing another one not right now. Uh, let's see here. Got it. Buy the Canon EOS R and give me your A7 III on. G yeah, psh, you fucking crazy? Heck no. I've been scrying to be since you were shooting Canon back in the day. Yep, sure have. 
Uh, let's see here. What else? Surprised that you are not eating chicken wings. Not right now, man. It's too late to be eating ch chicken wings. So I want to ask you guys, like, while you guys are still in here, um, what do you guys think of Sony's new um, 6100 and 6600? Let's have a conversation real quick. What do you guys think about the 6100 and the 6400? Uh, let's see here. We've been live for a minute, so we're good. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk. So now that I've answered all you guys' questions, we're all caught up. What well, lights are those behind you? These are the Flashpoint. Um, you really going to make me get these lights, bro? Man. All right. These are lights in my studio. This is the Flashpoint Studio 400R2. There you go. Those are the Flashpoint Studio 400. Those are 400 watt strobes, but there are two. Meaning, I have about 40s in here, and guess what? They're only $120. Yeah, those strobes are only $120. I have four of them. Um, and guess what? They work with my R2 trigger. So I don't have to go up to each light and press them and all that other stuff that you got to do when you're in a studio. Nope. They all work with my R2 trigger because they're Flashpoint. Better learn some. Yes, sir. Uh, do you use filters to protect your glass? No, I do not use UV filters. Protect your glass. Put your lens. Put your lens caps on them. Uh, let's see. A6000 want to be like a lens cap for the 105. Yeah, pretty much. All right. So here we go. 6100 is okay for starter camera. 6600 will be the beast camera all around if somebody doesn't want full frame. Um, I buy the 6100 since all it does. And have his profiles, Ivis and Z battery. All right, so check it out, guys. So we got two. This is good. So we got two peop, two different people with two different opinions. One person says that the 6100 is a good starter camera. The 6600 is a beast. The other person says that they are about a 6100 since it's basically the same as the 64 and the 66. What do you guys think? I think there isn't much difference between the 61 and the 66. I'm getting 61. Yeah, got another one. Somebody else says it. So, I'm going to give you my opinion on the 61 and the 66. First of all, all of them don't... Here's the things that you don't... I don't want you to think. Don't think that your image quality is going to be better on any of those cameras. All of them have the same sensor, the same bionics, the same exact sensor. So, if you're thinking that you can shoot with the 6100 or... Excuse me. If you're thinking that shooting on the 6600 is going to be your image quality is going to be better on the 6600 than the 6100, you are solely mistaken. It is the exact same. It's the exact same sensor. So you're not going to get better image quality. So for anybody who's saying that, they're they're bullshit. They're they're wrong. Second thing is they all have the same type of focusing. They all have 425 auto focusing points. So don't think that one camera is going to be faster than the other camera. They're all the same. Uh, silent shooting mode, they all shoot eight frames a second. Don't think one is gonna shoot faster than the other one. They're all the same. Um, now here's, a, so here's, here's, I don't know why Canon did this and we're gonna get into this, man, cause this is really crazy. You remember when Sony, I'm sorry, Sony. You remember when Sony came out with the A6000, the A6300 and then the A6500? A lot of people started off with the A6000, but then you can justify upgrading to the 63 or the 65 because what was with the A6000? The A6000 didn't have a microphone jack. It didn't have a headphone jack. The A6000, um, it didn't have 4K. Um, it didn't have a lot of things. So stepping up to the 63 or 65 was justifiable, you know? But the A6100 has 4K. It has a microphone jack. It has everything that you need. But you know, the only thing it does is, here's a few things that it doesn't have, of course. If you think that, now, the A6100 is $750. The A6400 is $890. The A6600 is $1390. So we're just gonna say $1400. So you're talking about a $700 difference between the 6100 
and the 6600. So let's talk about some of the things that you're going to get if you get the 6600. You're going to get the Z battery. I don't know how many people still out there care about those batteries. I love this. I love the Z battery, but it's not a deal breaker for me. I really don't care, especially if you're shooting portraits. If you're shooting video, it's probably justifiable because you have a bigger, longer video uh, battery. If you're shooting portraits, I don't care about the Z battery. I just don't. It makes no sense to care about a Z battery if you're shooting portraits. You have time to change a battery. Who cares about the battery if you're shooting portraits? Nobody. Let's be real, all right? I'm, I'm as real as it's going to get, so let's be real. So you get the Z battery. You get IBIS. IBIS is important. I believe IBIS is important. IBIS has always been important for me. When you shoot at a slow shutter speed, when you're shooting to uh, you know, 1 20th of a second, 130, 140, 160, um, or if you're vlogging or any of that, having IBIS is extremely helpful. A lot of people say, I don't care about IBIS. You either don't shoot very slow shutters or you don't vlog a lot and get a lot of shake. Unless you walk flat footed. Having IBIS is awesome. But here's the thing. Is it worth $700 upgrade? No, I don't think so. I don't, that's, that's up for you to decide. So what else do you get? You get H, uh, you get HLG, you get S log. I don't care about color grading. I don't care about that because I color grade myself. Um, you get um, the exp the expanded ISO. Get expanded ISO. I'm not going to have my ISO that high anyway. Who cares? Um, let me see what else. I'm 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 running these off the top of my head. That's how good I know these shits. Um, now here's one thing. It is weather sealed. The 6400 is weather sealed. The 6600 is weather sealed. The 6100 is not weather sealed. So if you're shooting rain, dust, moisture, and all that, you got to protect your 6100 just a little bit more than the other ones because it is not weather sealed. A lot of people have not mentioned that. It is not weather sealed. So um, here's the thing. Now, here's what I will tell you. $750 is great. Flip up screen, 4K, same focus, same everything. Um I would I was going to I was going to pre-order the 6100. The reason that I didn't because I don't want to wait till October to get the 6100. The 6100 doesn't ship until the middle or end of October. I'm not waiting that long for 6100. The 6600 doesn't ship until the mid or in November. Definitely not waiting that long. I was wanting to get the 6100, but there's only about a $120 difference between the 6100 and the 6400, which the 6400 is weather seal and you get H HLG and you get a better ISO. I do think those three things are worth about a $100 upgrade. From the 61 to the 64 which right now you can go out and get the 6400 so i do think that paying the extra hundred dollars for weather seal for s log for iso i do think that that is justifiable in a purchase but other than that no and you can get it right now if you wanted to but i'm not waiting till october to get something i'm not waiting till october to get the 6100 all right questions Yay. Let's see here what we got. Uh, let's see here. I might have a 65. I think that there isn't much difference between... Yep, yeah, we just said that. I might get a 6500. The 6500 has dropped tremendously. If I could find a 6500 for the same price, if you go... But hey, check this out. Listen, I'm going to tell y'all a secret. Go on OfferUp or go on like let go. Download OfferUp in your area or like let go. Or go on eBay. They got 6500s for like 750 People are selling a 6500s right now. Offer up. That's my tip. Uh, I could get two A6100s for the price of a 600 You could. 
that's a really good I didn't think about that. You could actually get two 6100s for the price of a 6600. And then you'll have two beast cameras. That's way better than getting a 6600. You might as well get two 6100s. They both shoot 4K. Yo, that's crazy. Mind blown. Wow. All right, let's see here. Screw the customer 6300 because people. Uh, I could get a 6300 same. Yep, they all got the same stickers. Definitely all right. The 6100 is the same as 600 if you're a beginner. Uh, I'm glad I I'm glad I sold my 64 because I wouldn't have got what I got for it. Yep, bro, summer's almost over. No underwear shoot. Oh no, and no underwear shoot yet. <laughs> That's you know what? It's funny that you mention that because Saturday I got to shoot Saturday morning, and guess what kind of shoot it is? I'm not going to say anything. Uh, let's see here, 75 back. That's fine. If you're advanced, the benefit system does not matter for picture profiles. Uh, it still, it still won't matter. Um, even though Sony's are the same, damn near they are, they still do better than Canon. Trash six mark, yeah, absolutely. Um, six hundred would be the best camera for a vlogger, someone who does video and photography. Ibis isn't good, but helps Z battery last longer. I out of focus, am I foot visible? Eye out of focus, animal eye out of focus, all those things that you mentioned are with all the cameras. So you're not, they're all, they're all the same. So you can't mention focus. They all have the same focus. Uh, let's see here. Only thing they don't have is Ibis and Z battery. But $7,700 upgrade, that's, that's on you. A CC don't have all the tilt flat, uh, that little flash on it. That's another deal breaker. <laughs> Uh, going 3.5 or 2.8 will let more light. Yep, 6300 can hang with my a7 III. It probably can, depending on how you shoot. It shouldn't though. Let go offer up, are the up in these joints. Yep, f that 6500 trash color signs not move. Yeah, that's you. 6300, 65, 61, 64, 66. Yep. So that's it. Now a lot of people ask me why do you think Canon dropped all these cameras at one time. I'm, I'm sorry, Sony. You know what? Sony reminds when they did that. Sony remind me of Apple. For all you guys out there who have Apple phones, you know that's in order to stay ahead of the game. In order to in order to stay relevant in the game, you have to um, you have to keep your name out there. That's what Apple does. Do you remember when Apple? I remember when Apple came out with the iPhone four, and then they came out with the iPhone five. Apple. The iPhone 4 and the iPhone 5 was like the exact same phone. But the only thing they did, what everybody knows that Apple does, they changed the they changed the CPU, they and they give it a little better camera. Change CPU, give it a little better camera. That's what they do. Change the speed on it, give it a little better camera. A little bit of better, better processor, give it a little better give it a better camera. The iPhone 4 and the iPhone then they came out with the iPhone 4 and it was like the 4C and it was like three or four cameras in like the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 5. Then when they came out with the iPhone 6, that's when they first, that's the first time ever they went big. Remember Apple said that they would never make a big phone? But after Steve Jobs died, you know, they, they know Samsung was killing the game and Apple customers was begging Apple, please come out with a bigger phone. Please come out with a bigger phone. They came out with the iPhone 6. But then they went from the iPhone 6 to 7. And it was like the exact same ones. But here's the thing. Here's how they are similar to Sony with them doing this. Only thing they changed was like a little thing. But they kept dropping. And they kept dropping. And they, they saturated the market so much that Apple's name was in everybody's mouth. Everybody was always talking about Apple. Apple. Even if you didn't like the product, you were saying something about Apple. And that's what they wanted. Even though people didn't like it, even though people hated it because Apple only changed one or two things in their phone and they call it a new Apple phone, people were still talking about Apple. They saturated the market. That's pretty much what Sony is doing. Sony has a lot of competitors right now that are coming out with mirrorless cameras. You got the Nikon, you got Fuji, you got uh, Canon. Everybody's coming out with mirrorless cameras. 
So in order for Sony to stay ahead of the game, in order for Sony to stay in everybody's mouth when it comes to mirrorless, they pretty much took on the same business practice. They dropped two or three cameras at one time. So think about the lineup that's just about that's about to happen. They came out with the A6400 last month. Okay? September, they they're shipping the A7R4. There's going to be a bunch of buzz, a bunch of videos going on about the A7R4 when we get it. October is when they come out with the 6100. It's going to be shipping. People are going to saturate the market, videos, pictures. It's all going to be about the 6100. November, 6600. Video is going to come out, comparison videos, everything about the 6100. It is a business practice. In order to stay ahead of the game, in order to keep the market saturated, in order to 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 have everybody say something, even if you don't like the 6100 or the 66, even if you don't like Sony, it, Sony is still in your mouth. It's still in talks. It is a business practice. And what they did was they saturated the market really fast. Nobody is talking about any other cameras right now but Sony and what Sony just did, right? It's a business practice. That's how you stay relevant. That's how you stay ahead of the game. And it was a good, it is a, it's, that's what capitalism is. That's why I put, that's why I named it capitalism. They capitalize on basically what they just did. And now for guess what? For the next three or four months, it's going to be all about Sony. Until, and then Sony at Photo Plus in October, guess what I think they're going to drop? They're going to drop the A7S III. I really think that Sony is going to drop or you know drop the A7S III at Photo Plus. Um, so it's, it's, all about, it's, it's all about Sony. I'm sorry. Um, nobody else is doing what Sony is doing right now. That's just how it is, whether you like them or not. It's, it's facts. It's factual. You can't, you can't not facts. So, uh, let me see here. What you got? My only complaint about the 6000 series design. Yeah. I used to have the Samsung Mega. Yep, that was true. Tablet. Oh, yeah. They got a 6260. Yep. 2600 is perfect zoom. Sigma 150 to 160. Yep. Yeah, man. So, it's pretty crazy. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. But I think... Um, I think there's going to be a lot of things coming out before the year is over, man. Um, what are you guys interested in seeing? What are you guys interested in, you know, either Sony coming out with or I know we got some Canon, some Nikon, some Sony people in, in here right now. So what are you guys interested in seeing right now, like coming out like camera wise? What would you like to see? Don't say 4K at 60 because that's coming. Everybody knows 4K at 60 is coming. Um, everybody knows 10 bit 422 is coming. If you shoot 10 bit 42, if you don't shoot 10 bit 422, it's I, I can't wait till they come out with 10 bit 422. Uh, anyway, A92. All right, so hey, so nobody knows what they're gonna do with the A92. Here's the thing the A9 is a beast, but let's talk about this. The A9, when it came out, was $4,500. The A9. $4,500, 20 frames a second. So, what do you think they're going to do with the A92? <laughs> I am interested to, I, I honestly, if I could give y'all some insight or, or give y'all some telltales about the A92, I promise you I would. So don't ask me or be like, yo, you shoot Sony, you talk to Sony with it. I, Sony has not told me anything about the A92. So, I am just as excited to see what they're going to do with the A92 than you are. We know it's going to be a sports camera. We know, I don't know how they're going to step it up. It's already 20 frames a second, man. I mean, like, it's already 20 frames a second, bro. So, I have no idea. Uh, a lot of people want to see the A92, though. I'm going to go, a lot of people are going to go off. I don't know why a lot of people are going all in for the A92. I know a lot of people that's waiting for the A92. It's a sports camera. It's it's a speed demon. It's fast as fuck. That's the that's the purpose of it. It's not a resolution junkie. It's a speed demon. What exactly do you do day in and day out that you need a camera that fast? Unless you are a professional professional sports photographer. 
why in the hell do you need to walk around the street that you live on with an A92? Or A9 period, for that matter. That expensive ass camera. If I shot a lot of NFL games, NBA games, if I was doing a lot of that stuff, I would invest in the A92 in, or A9 in a heartbeat. But I am a portrait wedding photographer. I don't need A92 or A9. The A7 III is amazing for everything I need. 10 frames a second. And I have the A6400. I can go crop or anything like that. So, it depends. Global shutter with new stack sensor. Uh, the opto, you have the AA filter, 25 frames a second, continuous, 35, silent, no banding, 25 frames a second, I can see that, 25, 27, okay, give it a little bump, I understand, I can see that, I'm looking for news about Canon and all you read about is Sony, you're not going to find anything about nobody else, Sony has completely saturated the market right now, all about Sony, like I said, it's a business practice, that's what, that's, that's what I would have did if I was Sony. So Sony is it, Sony is mirrorless. You know what I'm saying? They are mirrorless. Everybody's just trying mirrorless now. Sony is the king of mirrorless. So in order to stay on top, you got to do something drastic. You got to drop three or four cameras. You got to keep your name in people's mouths. That's how it go. Uh, Sports and Zoo. Uh, they just need to fix banning issues with the A9. I agree. Um, you think Sony should drop a 51.4 or 50 or 1.8 G Master? Um, do I think Canon should drop a 50? Hmm, I mean, I'm sorry, Sony. Do I think Sony should drop a 50? Hmm, they it's kind of hard to that's kind of hard because I mean, they got Zeiss, but that's Zeiss though, that's not Sony, it's Zeiss, it's Sony Zeiss, but it's not one of Sony, so they got the 518. Um, Oh no, that's hard. They probably won't. It's, pro it's too many. Uh, I don't think they would do that. Um, because a lot of people who shoot Sony like the 55. Um, and the 55 is... The 55 right now, I think, is like $900. So if Sony came out with a, a 51.4 G Master, it's probably going to be about $1,600, $1,700. And nobody's going to buy it because everybody's going to just result to the 55.18. Zeiss because everybody likes how sharp it is so I think they're going to waste their money with it they probably know that already um, so whatever uh, the M62 just came out the 90D and no one is talking about it because of Sony <laughs> yeah it's funny and the, the 90D is a beast it's 32 megapixel freaking crop sensor bro I think, and it has D-Path and it has a tilt screen and everything almost just exactly like the 80D um, and I was, man, listen, I was in love with the ADD. The ADD is a monster, bro. I still love that. I was, that was like my main video camera. Um, and I just like the flippy turning around screen. It's crazy. Um, let's see. Sony should definitely drop a 50. Kenny, Kenny is a sleeping dragon. Kenny is a slain dragon. <laughs> so just get the Sigma 1.4. Yep. The Sigma 1.4 is... The best. I sold my 5518 Zeiss to get the 514 Sigma. And the Sigma is sharp as hell. Sharp as hell. If you don't think the Sigma is sharp, look at my video that I just posted two days ago in the studio. That entire photo shoot was shot with one lens in the studio. That entire shoot was done with the 514 Sigma. I'm telling you. Those are the kind of results that that thing produces. If you think I'm lying, go look at my video that I just posted. Tell me. Uh, I had the 60D and loved it. Yeah, 60D was okay. The 80D was fire, bro. Uh, hi, man. I want to buy a light. I want to buy a light strobe. I am between one 8400 or two 8200. Which one do you recommend to buy? Ooh. Um... <laughs> You know what? A lot of people is jumping on this 8400 bandwagon. I would definitely say invest in. I would definitely say get the two 8200s. Uh, that's if you're going. I would definitely say start off with the 8200s. The only reason is because they are more versatile. When in photography, especially lighting, you want versatility. The 8200s are very very powerful. And putting them with the adapter and using them together for 400 watts, you're going to be able to overpower the sun. 
but there's also times like nighttime where the 8200 really really shines the 8200 really shines at night because 200 watts is way more than enough and then you have the ability to, to use two of them you can just break them apart and get a nice rim light use one as a nice rim light and use one as your main light there is no other there's no other um uh lights right now like the 8200 i absolutely love them it, it, it is it's great I, I love the 200s um so yeah i would definitely say that but it's up to you um i don't i wouldn't get i don't get the 400 and, and like i said the 400 pro is 639 dollars um I would, I would, I would lean on, I would lean on the air of, um, of, of versatility. That's what I would, that's what I would do. So, yeah, eighty two hundreds. I haven't been able to lower the power of the sun to eighty two hundreds. Yep, it definitely could be me. Yeah, you can, you should definitely be able to overpower the sun with two eighty two hundreds, man. Um, easily, easily. So. Yep, cameras and capitalism, man. That's what we're doing, bro. So, yep. Adorama has a deal right now. I don't think Adorama has a deal right now on the 400 Pro. I think they're still 639 or 620. Yeah, I think they're still 629 or 639. I haven't saw any deals with them. They normally email me when they have the deal um, because I have a partnership with Adorama, but I don't think they do. Um... Uh, yeah, so, but anyway, man, um, yo, this was awesome, man, I really appreciate you guys, I mean, we've been on this jink for a minute, so, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off of here, man, you guys have been awesome, tune in next Wednesday, so, and then we're gonna have some new, some new topics next Wednesday, we didn't talk about the, we didn't talk about the A7R4, so, I'll tell you what, we'll leave the A7R4 for next week, because, the A7R4 is supposed to ship within the U.S. next week. Like, I'm supposed to get my A7R4 on September the 12th. That's what it says. Hopefully, I get it earlier because I am the first pre-order with Adorama. I, I ordered that mug as soon as they open. Um, so, we're supposed to be getting it. So, next week, we're going to talk about the A7R4. We're going to talk about why people are getting it, why you're not getting it. And uh, we're gonna bring up some more topics on um, on what's up Wednesdays. So, yeah, that's it, man. That's my time. It's eleven. Y'all need to get y'all bust to bed, get the babies to bed, man. Y'all need to bring y'all drink, bring y'all coffee out next time, so we can have a nice little another discussion. Um, and then one of these weeks, I have Tamika on. Maybe maybe Tamika will come out and do a video with me also. So, um, yeah, bro, this is awesome, man. Make sure y'all bring these questions. Bring up some more questions. Anything I can answer for y'all live on um, YouTube, that's what we're going to do. And uh, we're going to keep it popping. We're going to keep it pimping, player. All right. So, anyway, that's me signing off. Yo, thank you guys for your support. Check out my Instagram for the new stuff that I just posted. And, um, yeah, man, let me make sure I got everybody before I go. Let's talk models next week. Oh, yo, you know what? Let's talk Let's talk model. Let's talk posing. Um, yeah, let's let's talk models next week. That I got a lot. We got a nice, a lot of nice topic um, about models. So um, yeah, we are gonna break it down next week. And yeah, let's do models next week. I like that. I like that. Uh, bring your great pop. And I'm bringing my great pop and my chicken. Uh, maybe somebody can come on um, come on live with me. I have Streamyard, so if if you guys have a decent camera or whatever, I'm gonna send you guys a link. And uh, maybe we can get a few people on here to actually do a live with me. All I got to do is send you the link and you guys can come on here with me. You don't have to have OBS and all this other stuff set up. So if you up for coming up on live with me next week and talking, um, I'll send you a link and uh, we can make that happen also. Maybe I can get somebody different on with me every week to um, answer some questions and um, I'll also bring on some from some of my you know photography friends and professionals and Maybe me and Jason Lanier or somebody else to do something for y'all. So I don't know. We'll see what we'll see if we can make it happen. All right. We're gonna do we're gonna do it good though. Appreciate you, Mikey, for coming out, man. And everybody else, Harold's chicken. Yo, make sure y'all get some chicken up in this piece next time. 
Okay, we can talk. We can talk poser. We gonna talk everything models. All right, we gonna talk everything models next week. And yeah, uh, you want me to bring Victoria? Victoria's not gonna come over to my house this late. But maybe I can send her a link, and maybe I can bring her on. Maybe she'll maybe she'll come on. I, you know what? Maybe I can bring some of my models on. That'll be dope because I can send them the link, and then I can I can tie some of my models in. Yo, all right. So I tell y'all real quick for y'all who are still here. Which my which of my models? I'm a I'm gonna post the Instagram. I'm gonna post it in Instagram. I'm gonna post it as a vote. Which one of my models do y'all want to see me bring on for y'all to talk to, ask questions with? Who, who, who do y'all want me to grill on my YouTube channel? It got to be one of my models, all right? And I'll bring on one of my models for y'all next week. How about that? We're, we're going to grill them live on YouTube next week, all right? That's what we're going to do. We're going to make it happen. Yeah, me and Jason will come on one time. Jules is around. I can bring on Jules. Jules is, Jules is around. Victoria is around. Treasures is still around. All of, the, all of them are still around. Um... Yep, they are all do it. So, yeah, you got to do some research. Because, um, yeah, I got a lot of models. So, Jules, Faith, Faith is Faith is almost married, man. I haven't talked to Faith in a minute. I'm going to be dead honest with you. We've, we've, I mean, me and Faith haven't shot in a minute because she's, she's booed up. So, um, yeah, she's um, kind of like out of, um, out of commission right now. So, um, but, yeah, um, Saturday. I'm trying to go live. Oh, I forgot to put this out. Saturday, I'm trying to go live. Somebody asked about an underwear. It's all, Somebody said it's almost, summer is almost up, and I still haven't did an underwear shoot or nothing like that. The funny thing is, Saturday, I have a um, type of shoot, something like that, that we are shooting for YouTube. So, I'm going to try to go live. It's a sunrise it's a sunrise shoot on the beach. We got this abandoned, is there's an abandoned bar um, on the beach that we're going to shoot at. And it's going to be awesome. See, I just built the tee for you guys. It is a new model, and I've never shot with her before. So, we're going to make it do what it do. Early in the morning. <laughs> I'm just acting a fool. I'm I'm being I'm I'm acting a fool, bro. Uh, yeah, we are we are fast. Yep, do do a model switch video. What is a model switch video? You model in the model <laughs> photographs. I, we I might I might make Tamika do something like that. I know Manny did something like that. I I don't I'm not up for copying other people's style and like that. No, I don't do that stuff. So. Uh, you modeling for Jason Lanier? <laughs> yeah, right. Abandoned beach. Show us. Yeah, it's a it's an abandoned bar that sits on the beach that we're going to shoot at. So it's going to be pretty dope. Um, not barn, fool. It's an abandoned bar, like a bar you drink at. There's a bar that sits on a beach in Virginia Beach. So we're going to try to hit it up early because of what she's wearing. Make sense? Okay. All right, got to have that disclaimer when you model for Jason Lanier. Oh, my God, we are not about to go. Hey, it's time to go. Anyway, we signing off now after that comment. All right, anyway, yo, I appreciate you guys for rocking with me. Hey, until next time, next Wednesday, we're going to talk models next Wednesday. Bring your comments, bring your questions about models, modeling, uh, modeling contracts, all those things, TFP shoot, contracts, anything you want to go over, I'll answer it for you live on here, all right? Until next time, guys, I'll holler at you later. Peace out.